The final five games of the regular season are down to this, starting off with the Nashville Predators, one of our most hated rivals. Find out how the Jets can take on this team on tonight's episode of Locked On, Winnipeg Jets. You're locked on the Hockey Jets, your daily podcast on the Winnipeg Jets. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Good evening, friends, and welcome to tonight's episode of Locked On, Winnipeg Jets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Harrison Lee, an avid Winnipeg Jets fan and an online blogger. You can follow me on Twitter at HLivingLoco and at LO underscore Winnipeg Jets. Thanks for making Locked On Jets your first listen of the day every day. If you like what you're hearing, be sure to like, follow, and subscribe on all of your favorite podcasting platforms and YouTube. Doing so, of course, is always free of charge and ensures you never miss another episode. Most of all, though, we just love and appreciate your support. Tonight's episode, obviously, we are kicking off the final five games of the regular season starting tomorrow. Winnipeg versus Nashville, one of our most hated rivals, a team that we have a lot of playoff history with, and um, very outside chance, a potential first-round playoff opponent. Now, I think that scenario is super unlikely, or I, w- I wouldn't say super unlikely, but I don't think it's going to happen, right? I think it's probably modest odds at this point. And that's fine, right? I don't know that, you know, the Jets um, would particularly love playing Nashville, although recently with how the Preds have been, maybe there is a chance that this game could go more in Winnipeg's favor. But, well, the Jets might get a bit of a preview of that should it actually happen in the postseason with this game uh, on Tuesday. Before we talk about what to expect from this game and what I'm hoping to see, just wanted to let you know tonight's episode is brought to you by Sleeper. Download the Sleeper app and use promo code Locked on NHL to get up to a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. See Sleeper's terms of use for details. Now, like I said, the Jets are going to be taking on Nashville. And uh, if you look at their lineup, right, the Preds are a very interesting team in that up and down the lineup, there's not a ton of game-breaking talent, right? This team is is very much, I would say, a top six heavy squad. And even in the top six, it's kind of a top one sort of line team, right? I don't want to say that in a very disparaging way, but I think if you look at how you know, this team might stack up against the current lineup of the Jets. It's not good. Uh, this squad, compared to what Winnipeg rolled in with last time the Jets faced the Preds, it's it's looking like it's going to be a real uphill slog for Nashville. And if you look at the recent form, it's been all over the place. Um, they did just beat the Preds uh, yesterday in a shootout, but you look at some of the other games they've played, they did beat the Blues, but then they got shut out by both the Islanders and Preds. They got demolished by Arizona and Colorado and then barely beat the Knights in overtime with a one nothing win against um, the Red Wings a couple weeks ago. So, you know, looking at this recent record, very mixed bag, not a team that looks like it's really all that excited about the postseason. If I'm being honest, this squad kind of looks more like what we expected it to earlier this year, which there's flashes of talent. But I think the reality of, you know, the, the Preds is that they sort of overachieved for a big stretch and now they might be coming back down a little bit you know a little bit more to earth now they've still got like a six and four uh record in their last 10 games so you know generally speaking still a pesky team and not one that i think the jets can take lightly but generally speaking i feel like with how the jets have played recently this actually is a really good opportunity for winnipeg to prove that it is the better squad now the the preds are likely to use forsberg o'reilly and nyquist as their top line Zucker, Sissons, and Beauvillier on the second, Jankowski, Novak, and Evangelista on the third, and Smith, McCarron, and Sherwood on the th- on the fourth. So looking up and down, you know, there's not a ton there uh, up front. I-, I think, you know, you might be a little bit concerned about Novak and Evangelista together. And of course, Forsberg is still just Philip Forsberg. That guy is like mercurial and timeless. I love watching him play hockey, and it's a shame that he's in Nashville because uh, if he was on a team that was outside of the, uh, of the central, he might be one of my favorite goal scorers ever to watch. But because he plays for the Preds, screw him. I kid mostly. Um, but, you know, he's he's phenomenal. O'Reilly has kind of been uh, not necessarily at the top of his game, but still one of Nashville's best players. Very impressive how he has continued to just chug along as a really good top six center. 
obviously not as elite as he used to be, but still pretty darn good. Zucker, I thought, was a decently savvy acquisition, though I did think they were going to flip him for assets with some salary retained. They did not. Uh, but hey, you know, as a guy who's going to be a perfect middle six winger, kind of in the Niederreiter mold, I suppose you really can't hate it. Otherwise, I think the Jets actually have a pretty good advantage should they play to their strengths and, you know, keep playing with pace and pressure. On the defense, I think they are going to have to be a little bit worried about Roman Yosi. Uh, Yosi is just having another monster season. He, again, kind of in the Forestburg mold. Timeless and mercurial. This guy is an amazing player. He, you know, kind of went from being a little bit overrated to actually putting up pretty fair results for what you'd expect from him, from a guy who has the sort of reputation that he has. He's been uh, a monster offensive presence. Defensively, he's been doing some pretty good work, or a strong transition proponent. Really one of the key guys that has kind of powered a lot of their recent success. Uh, Yozy, Forsberg, at times Saros. Um, this is a player that the Jets really can't give space to, and he's he's still likely to find a way to score. It's kind of what he and Forsberg do, but I think the Jets overall have a pretty good advantage. I'm looking at this lineup for Winnipeg, and I'm not really seeing much that I think will be changed coming into Tuesday. Uh, Niederreiter, I don't know if he's actually going to travel with the team. Um, he did have a back leg, or like I don't exactly know the, the full terminology, but it was like a rear laceration, uh, which... Look, if you have a laceration on your leg, just let it heal. Don't mess with it. It's really not something that you can take lightly and play on. So uh, hoping Nino recovers quickly, I think he would be, you know, slotting in probably on the third line, I, I think. And then you have Appleton maybe slide down to the fourth. Not 100% sure. My concern is that when he comes back, it's going to be Toffoli on the second line. But I feel like with how Perfetti has played, if Bones is really serious about making this team uh, earn its minutes, I just don't see any conceivable way that you can pull off Perfetti. I know it's going to happen, or at least I'm worried that it's going to happen, but I, I just, Perfetti, Monaghan, and Connor play so well together that it would really be a shame to break a, a great and honestly elite second line. So um, for, for this lineup, obviously, Ehlers, Shifley, Velarde, probably going to be starting you off. Connor, Monaghan, and Perfetti, hopefully anchoring your second. Toffoli, Lowry, and Appleton on your third. Baron, Nemesnikov, and Ayafalo on your fourth. You keep that lineup as it is, I think this should be a win. I think the Jets are starting to give me that confidence that they can dominate these games again. I'm starting to feel like they can push the tide against playoff teams, and so far we've really seen that. The only thing that does give me pause um, is Morrissey Pionk. That pairing continues to be a bit of an eyesore, and you know, for Morrissey, it's tough, right? Having Pionk uh, be a little bit chaotic in his own end definitely makes life harder on Josh, and as much as he is you know, putting up at a, like an elite Norris caliber season, it's kind of hard to really uh, make the most of it when you have uh, Pionk kind of doing what Pionk does. And, you know, I, I, I know Neil really tries hard, but I think it is obvious that he's been overmatched. Um, we also did see Dylan and DeMello paired together. I don't know if that's going to change necessarily. I really feel like if you just swap DeMello and Pionk, it would actually solve a lot of problems. I'm not going to sit here and say that Dylan and Pionk is a great second pairing, but it's better than having Pionk play top line minutes. So I wouldn't mind that change. Third pairing, you might see Sandberg and, and uh, Miller or maybe Sandberg and Schmidt. I honestly don't know. They keep rotating out the number 60 and Stanley played a pretty decent game last time. So wouldn't be shocked if he stays in. I honestly don't know. Uh, it's hard to say because they just keep shuffling around the number 60 pairings. But, I mean, it is what it is, right? Whoever plays there will probably be fine enough. Uh, just at some point, it'd be nice if they could maybe pick with, you know, pick somebody and kind of stick with it. Let them get some chemistry and maybe stop changing things around this much. But, hey, rotation isn't always the worst. It does keep guys fresh. Just, you know, heading into the postseason, maybe lock down that spot a little more firmly. Of course, the Jets do have some other potential stuff coming up, though. Aside from this game, they have, you know, I've, I've talked at length about this really tough stretch, which we'll talk about uh, a little bit later. But I did want to spotlight a couple of interesting potential roster developments for the Jets. Winnipeg might have some opportunities to give some guys some season debuts or maybe even think about who to bring with their Black Aces squad when the playoffs roll around. We'll get to that in just a quick moment. Before we go any further, though, I do want to shout out our friends and partners at Sleeper. We are almost towards the end of the season, and the Jets are finally back in the driver's seat after a bit of a chaotic stretch where they looked like they might be sliding out of a, a top three central division finish. 
Thankfully, things have stabilized. But regardless of where the Jets are in the current standings, I want to remind you that you can win big by playing Daily Fantasy Hockey on Sleeper, the official Daily Fantasy app of the Locked On NHL Network. Sleeper is our number one choice for daily fantasy sports and especially hockey because with Sleeper, you can win 100 times your cash in daily fantasy hockey contests. For those of you who are stats nerds, it's time to actually make the most of that knowledge. Maybe you know Sidney Crosby's plus or minus. Maybe you know Ovechkin's goal scoring rate this year. Perhaps you even know what crazy save percentage Hellebuck is rolling in the in the Jets crease. If you think you can actually beat their projections for a given game against sleepers, guess what? You might just win big because if you get eight stats category project projections correct for a given game, guess what? You could win 100 times your cash with Sleeper. That's 100 times your cash by betting with Sleeper. So start paying attention and nail your picks so you can start winning big. Use promo code locked on NHL and you'll get up to a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. That's code locked on NHL. See Sleeper's terms of use for details and locational availability. Hello, friends, and welcome back to this episode of Locked On, Winnipeg Jets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Every day, thank you so much for joining us on today's episode as we are just prepping for a big game against the Preds. Could be a huge uh, litmus test for the Jets. Nashville's kind of struggled recently, so I don't know if it's going to be a game that a lot of people are going to uh, live or die by necessarily. But, you know, for the Jets, a, a nice preview of uh, upcoming playoff attractions, potentially maybe a first round opponent if the Jets were to somehow win the division and not only do that, but also win the West. Let's kind of, you know, take it one step at a time, though. You know, I think Winnipeg is in a pretty good position, at least as it is. Having to face off against Colorado, though, in your first round, mm, I don't know if I, I, I necessarily love that, love that, but hey. You know, to be the best, you've probably got to beat at least some of the best. And maybe with the Jets as they are now, maybe they could actually do that. But of course, uh, you know, like I said, I, I wanted to focus a little bit on some other ancillary stuff around the roster because the Jets might be getting some reinforcements uh, and, and maybe even some talented ones coming in the next few weeks. Uh, before we talk about who might be joining the squad, just wanted to let you know about something really cool the Locked On Network is doing. For all of you Fox Sports and ESPN watchers, maybe you're tired of all the shouting because you, you find you have to turn up the volume and it gets a bit tiresome. I recommend making the switch to Locked On Sports today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel program for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Now, like I said, the Jets obviously have some very talented players currently in the system, but, you know, with uh, with the, the playoffs were kind of rolling up, I don't think the Jets have a ton of cap space, but they might be able to make one or two roster call-ups uh, ahead of the postseason. And one guy that I would honestly think would be deserving of a, a, a look before the playoffs, not necessarily to actually earn some ice time in the postseason, but just, you know, uh, an NHL level paycheck for all of his hard work. It's got to be Brad Lambert. Lambert is one of the top scorers in the AHL this year. He has been um, an absolute monster for the Manitoba Moose, one of the top rookie scorers out there in the league. And, you know, in terms of, of uh, skaters, Lambert has been a phenomenal player. He's not going to rank in like the top five necessarily, but given, you know, his, his overall performance for a guy who's like, what is he like 20 or something? Uh, and, and a player who has really started to prove that he is an elite young talent. I am extremely excited to see what he can do. I think Lambert is one of uh, very clearly Manitoba's most brightest young stars. He's got 20 goals this year, 31 assists, and he's looking more and more like a player who's going to be a huge difference maker for the Jets in the near future. Um, he is, you know, a guy who I think for me, I've always been excited about. I, I've kind of circled his name um, ever since he was like a top prospect. I, I was super excited to see what he can do. But of course, there were a lot of adjustments that he would need to make in order to start graduating to the next level. I think he has really turned his game into something that's very pro ready. And I think, you know, this past year of development with the Moose has prepped him for a very bright NHL career. And I think, you know, Given how he's played this year, I really would like to see him maybe get some minutes with the Jets just at the end of the season, a nice game or two. Then you can kind of uh, send him back down or, or actually most likely add him to the Black Aces squad because there's no limit for that. Um, but, you know, Lambert for me, 
he's having a really good year. Now, I, I do kind of wonder, like, if the Moose make the postseason, I'm sure he'll probably spend most of his time down there. But, uh, you know, he is really exciting. I would like to see him maybe get a couple of minutes with the Jets if it's kind of like garbage time in a game and, you know, Winnipeg is not playing for anything anymore. Maybe give him his NHL debut, you know, a nice reward to cap the season, and then he gets to spend a deep playoff run with the Moose. I might also be interested in seeing um, – Maybe what uh, what uh, Elias Salamonson could do. I think his season's wrapping up pretty soon in uh, in Sweden, and it sounds like he might be coming over here pretty soon. So that'll be interesting. I wouldn't mind that. I don't think he'll actually you know make his debut this year. Probably next season. I think the timing just doesn't really work. And you know, with the Jets gonna uh, or the Jets likely to be in the the playoffs here pretty soon. Um, I don't think he'll probably do much at all. Uh, he might maybe spend some time with the Moose if they call him over. I don't quite know how that would work. But I think of those players, Lambert is probably the most likely to make it. Outside chance, Rucker McCrory signs and comes to the Jets. That might be a, a name worth highlighting. He has a championship uh, run coming up here with Michigan. Um, you know, the Frozen Four is almost upon us. And I think, you know, Michigan is one of the teams that's definitely competing for it, even if I, I don't quite think they're one of the favorites. I think they're very highly ranked, though. Uh, don't quote me on that. I don't follow college uh, hockey as much as some of these other teams. But in terms of a player who very likely could join the Jets pretty soon, Rucker's one of those guys who I think I would circle first. The big thing with Rucker is that he might also want to stay one more year with Michigan, which I think for me personally, I think that's a little bit of a mistake. I think he's kind of proven all that he can at the a, uh, at the NCAA level. Now it's actually time to take that knowledge and skill and translate it to the pro game. But, you know, I, I have heard in the past from guys who went pro, uh, at least one of them, you know, he did regret leaving college and, and you know, his pro, pro career was obviously uh, not, not as long lived as, as I think he would have liked. And, you know, McCrory is kind of on a different path, right? We're talking about a very highly touted prospect who was likely to spend many years with the Jets. But all the same, you know, you only get your college experience once. And I can understand if he maybe wants to give it one more year. But in terms of a guy who really should be playing at the pro level, I think Rutgers probably as close to NHL ready as you're likely to see a prospect coming out of the NCAA. So keep an eye out for that. Maybe he'll join the Black Aces squad if he does sign. Maybe he even makes his NHL debut. That would be pretty darn swell if you ask me. One other name to kind of keep track of, uh, and and I know that you know with with the Jets being pretty crowded, it's not likely that we're going to see him. Um, but uh, Dylan Anhorn, I I do wonder if he's going to potentially work his way up from the Moose at some point. I don't think it's going to it's not going to be this season because he only has like a tryout with the Moose right now. But Dylan could be an interesting one to maybe track, perhaps for next season. I think he's one of those players who's definitely an intriguing prospect. He's not young. He is like 25. So you're expecting him to be more of an impact NHLer or AHLer at this point. But if he does end up being like a pretty decent two-way defender, I think that'd be pretty fun. Um, I think that obviously for the Moose, he'd be a nice boost for their back end if he does pan out. And maybe if things go really well this season, perhaps he gets added to the Jets roster next year. But we'll have to see, right? He's uh, basically a free prospect. He was convinced to join the Jets in free agency. Wouldn't mind that. As far as the Moose are concerned, obviously all eyes are going to be on Kobe Barlow, who has just joined the team. I think I saw a video of him earlier walking into the locker room, so that'll be exciting. Obviously, Barlow uh, just finished his Owen Sound attack campaign. Massive goal scorer for them. Interested to see how his tools kind of line up at the pro levels, but I'm excited about him. I think he's a really cool player. He's definitely got leadership potential, and uh, given his lethal release, he could be a really fun player at the pro level. So let's hope he can boost Manitoba's offense and help them on a deep playoff run before maybe he even earns a spot out of camp next year with the Jets. But a lot to keep track of. Winnipeg is going to have at least one guy, I think, making an NHL debut here sometime in the next few weeks. We'll have to keep an eye on that. And I hope it is Brad Lambert because that would be really fun. And I think it would get the crowd super energized, not only ahead of the playoffs, but also for next season because this team is already really good. Just imagine what's going to happen when we have some of the homegrown kids joining the team too. Like I said, though, there is business to take care of, and that's five games ahead, starting with the Preds. And I want to talk about what I'm hoping to see in some of these games in just a little bit. Before we go ahead of ourselves, though, I just want to let you know something really cool from one of our friends at eBay Motors. 
Passion, drive, and patience. The formula for winning championships is also what keeps your vehicle alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one vehicle, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay's guaranteed fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or you get your money back. With eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge victories. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply. eBay Guaranteed Fit is only available to U.S. customers. Hello, friends, and welcome back to these closing thoughts on tonight's episode of Locked On Winnipeg Jets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Uh, thank you again so much as we are just wrapping up with some thoughts ahead of Winnipeg's upcoming very difficult road stretch. The Jets are going to be coming into the home stretch here against some of the best teams in the Central, and this is kind of like your uh, round one playoff preview of sorts. The Jets actually have an outside chance of playing not only Nashville, but Dallas, right? Most likely opponent right now is going to be Colorado, assuming that holds. I think the only question with Colorado is, are the Jets going to face them at home or on the road? Um with the Avs losing just now to the Stars, uh, obviously Winnipeg could actually leapfrog them with a win against Nashville on Tuesday, which for the Jets is probably uh, about as good as you could want. I think you really want to um, be in the driver's seat here. Uh, Winnipeg is obviously a team that probably fares better uh, at home than it does on the road, although I would say that their the road and home splits are actually pretty close, so I think the Jets would be comfortable doing either, but I think it'd be much more preferable to have Canada Life Center on your side. Now, for the Jets, uh, actually, it, they, I have to see if they actually own the tiebreaker um, for leapfrogging Colorado because by goal differential, the Avs would still have it. But in terms of what I'm hoping to see, at least in these next couple of games, get through Nashville, right? That's your first step. Beat the Preds, embarrass them on home ice, and I think things will feel pretty good. Like the Preds, not quite the litmus test that I think they um, might imagine themselves to be. I think Nashville's kind of been in a slump and in a bit of a funk. Where the real test comes in will be on Thursday and Saturday against the Stars and Avs. Uh, Dallas is an amazing team. Sick goal scoring, super deep, tons of offensive talent. Goaltending, though, a little bit suspect. I know that the goalies have kind of had Winnipeg's number this year. Uh, Wedgwood and Ottinger have kind of embarrassed the Jets recently. But I think with how the Jets' lines now look, I'm not expecting that to hold. This would be nice for the Jets to win their first game against the Stars this year. They have lost all three previous attempts. But you know what? It's never uh, too late to turn that form around and beat this team. Now the Jets actually have a mostly healthy lineup, right? Winnipeg was without at least one star talent in each of their last games against Dallas. But not, not anymore. Now they've got the full roster and things should be pretty uh, tip-top. Then you've got the Avs, and the Avs present an interesting one because I feel like this team is likely to be the one the Jets are going to face. And I think when you look at uh, Colorado's lineup, definitely top six heavy. I think, you know, Rottenen is is uh, basically day-to-day, -day, so he'll probably come back in time for the postseason. In fact, I would almost guarantee it. But after you get past, like, their top six, right, you've got Duran, McKinnon, and Lekkonen on the first line presently, Parise, Middlestad, and Nichushkin on the second. After that, you know, it's, uh, it's a lot of depth. You've got Duhame, Colton, and Trennan, and then Cogliano, Wag Wagner, and Kivi Vranta. Now, obviously, one of these guys will get scratched for uh, uh, Rantanen when he comes back. I don't quite know what's going on with Landeskog. I don't know if Landeskog is returning for the postseason. I've heard that he was like trying to skate and stuff, but I feel like at this point, I'm not really too concerned about him rejoining the team. Even if he does, he hasn't played in like a year, so... Um, in terms of what the Jets are like, likely looking at, you're you're pretty much what you see is what you get with this Avs team. They're fast, they're skilled, and they are not as good as they were when they won the Cup. So I think the Jets have a legitimate opportunity. I know that Walker and Middlestad have definitely improved this team like tremendously, but if we're talking about where Winnipeg is really going to win uh, the, the the true battle, I think it's going to be a net because Anunin and Gorgiev are not really top-end goalies, and that's where the Jets have Hellebuck and Brassois very clearly uh, winning out against that matchup. So 
If you're going to get into a bit of a track meet, obviously you might lose the McKinnon battle, but the Jets have all the firepower and tools to beat the, the bottom six. And I think that is where Winnipeg can really make hay. I'm not going to say it's going to be easy because it's not. This is going to be a very tough test, and I think the Jets would be fooling themselves to take any bit of this team lightly. But I know how the Jets have played recently. They haven't taken any of their opponents too lightly. I think that's the right turn in form, and I think that's the right uh, thought process. And they know that this is going to be a really tough battle. Um, you know, the final game of the road trip being against Colorado, your likely first-round opponent. Use it as a final tune-up before you meet them in the postseason. Then the Jets kind of wrap up a little bit quietly with Seattle and Vancouver. Vancouver uh, has not beaten a playoff team since Demko went down, so perhaps a, a bit of concern for them heading into the playoffs. And the Kraken, well, yeah, they're definitely out of it. They're uh, just waiting really for the season to end. And I think if you're a Seattle fan, you're just hoping that some of the bright prospects and stuff that they've got developing with uh, some of their affiliates eventually turns into a team that's a little more competitive. They definitely kind of crashed to earth a little bit this year, and I'm sure that was a bit of a tough pill to swallow. But for the Jets, you know, this is going to be a fun stretch. I think this promises to be a good playoff appetizer. I think it'll show us what this team really looks like with the reoriented top six. And hopefully, you know, Bones gets all of the evidence he needs to keep rolling these lines and keep the good times going. Because with the Jets, if they keep playing as they are recently, I think the sky is the limit for this team. So cross your fingers for good games. Cross your fingers for big wins against the Central Division. I really want this team to go far. I am very excited about Winnipeg's potential with these lineups. And uh, maybe some of the young kids will come in and perhaps even find a way to earn a couple of minutes, right? I don't really think it'll be during the postseason. In fact, I can tell you that's not going to happen. And I don't know that I would necessarily want that anyways, unless Lambert comes into the game and starts scoring hat tricks left and right. But hey, you know what? Can't count it out. I expect he'll be, uh, at least for now, a, a big you know, uh, portion of the Moose offense when it comes to the postseason run. But you know what? Let's see if we can maybe get him a, a, an NHL debut and his first uh, game puck and skate. So excited for that. But for tonight's episode, that is going to be all the time we have. Obviously, tomorrow we'll have a recap of Winnipeg versus Nashville. Let's hope for a big Jets victory. That's all the time that we're going to have, though. Thanks so much for listening. Have a great night. And as always, go Jets go.